for more Saita news when we reach another Wednesday, which is the coming week. And if you just joined us, it's all about sciences and technology today. So make sure that you hashtag XA and let us know what you want us to bring next to you so that we bring you all those learning curves into your brain. Welcome to it. My name is Lama Lee Moon. I'm joined by Awonke Dulaze as my co-host. Um, like we told you last week, we've got step-by-step -step, um, introduction can miss um, South Africa 2019 and we have news just in that we cannot share with you right now so you have to wait for tomorrow we know who's going to be hosting this year's Miss South Africa are you excited like we are of course you also make sure that you tune in to XA so that you've got those news step by step but right now we are joined by Uruja and Tyrone who are both um, founders of ZRD19. They went to UCT for their um, undergraduate. So let's find out more about Ezeropot's Amazon Zileo. But we want to find out first, in Doni RD9, and how can you benefit from it, and why does it exist? So let's head on to the Yolo Couches and find out more about them. Yes, yes, yes. Like he said, I am also interested to find out what it is. What is uh, RD9 is? Why was it founded, and what does it do? First of all, thanks for having us. No problem. Um, so, Artimax Solutions is a business that Uda and myself started. Mm. Um, and it really started uh, in 2016. Yes, yes. And it started from both our passions for robotics and also wanted to make a change. Uh, both of us sort of never had opportunities to be exposed to technology on this oh, level okay. at a young yes, age. Yes, yes. And we sort of wanted to change that. We were fortunate enough to be able to go to UCT and get uh, degrees in engineering mm. and sort of be exposed. But we sort of wanted to introduce a lot of other students and learners in the country to that opportunity as well. Yeah, that's just rather interesting. I want to know if you guys make money from this solution or not. Yeah, so, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, so we, we in the processes, it's been a, a long road. Uh -huh. mean, we started this out in 2016. Okay, yes. And uh, as we, we went through the journey, we've been doing pilots with, uh, with schools and we got a okay. very positive responses. So we, right now we geared up to, to roll out. Before RD9, when did you guys fall in love with um, technology? So for myself, it's sort of, I always knew I had a thing for technology, mm. but I sort of only had the opportunity to realize that actually when I was exposed to a computer for the first time at the age of five or six. Oh. Um, so it's been a long time coming for me, and I think it's the same for Rida. Yeah, so, so growing up, I always knew I wanted to work with actually robots. I, wanted to, I said mm. I wanted to build robots. And at that point, I didn't really know. Did you watch a lot of Robocop? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it goes to show. Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I, w I wanted to be an inventor. So I didn't really know what that was at that point. So I was lucky enough to get to university and then do the mechatronics, and it's been exciting ever since. Mm -hmm. I see that you guys have love for robots. For me, personally, ever since I saw the movie iRobot, I'm nervous about IA, artificial intelligence. What's your take on uh, how if I were to also build my uh, own robot, for, uh, so to speak, how can I ensure that it doesn't turn evil? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, where we are at the moment. It's very exciting uh, out there. I mean, the advances are going yeah. very, very yeah. fast. But it's uh, it's maybe a responsibility you should have. Uh, if you want to make an evil robot, uh, it's ah. going to be difficult, but yeah. you can do it. <laughs> Oh, can I understand, understand. I know that uh, you guys uh, mentioned a project that you are involved in. Tell me more about Mia. Okay, so the Maya project is sort of, a, it's a family of uh, what we offer, actually. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to introduce a lot more young people to the worlds of code coding, electronics, and robotics. Oh. And we do that through the Maya project. Okay. So what it consists of is it's these uh, build-it-yourself robot kits. Uh, we also have a curriculum that we've developed ourselves that allows a learner to explore these concepts on their own. So like self-learning, they can learn things like coding, uh, yes, yes. some data science bits, electronics. And then we also have a, a our in-house app hmm. that introduces them to programming. So okay. someone who's never experienced programming or coding at all can be introduced to that through the, the, the Maya project and so our offerings. Tarong, what are the Maya um, <coughs> functions? So yes, we're going to take that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so Maya is a build-it-yourself build robot. So. Yeah. Uh, we give it to kids in a 3D puzzle sort of way, so mm. it's uh, disassembled. And they, from the ground up, they build something almost out of nothing. Mm. And in there, they have uh, they get taught electronics, uh, programming, and they bring this all together in, into robotics. And each one of the, the components on the Maya robot mm. is linked to a curriculum. So they, can, they learn about light, sound, 
um, uh, motors, uh, position motors, and then they really just have fun with it. So it's a platform that teaches things. And also we have an app uh, uh, attached to it that lowers the, lowers the difficulty of learning code off the bat. Yeah. Right. So it's really a drag and drop. Um, if I could just quickly, just quickly to come into there, um, one of the things that we also um, have sort of was, was a knock-on effect of this oh. is I'm sure a lot of students out there ask, what's the relevance of maths and physics? Yes, 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 you know, yes, they learn yes, all these things in school and what's the point of it? With this sort of platform, they can very early see what's the benefit of maths, what's the benefit of yeah, physics yeah, and all those yeah. laws that they're learning. In how something they can, how actually can people build. actually be part of that if they are interested in learning about programming and uh, coding? How can people... I know you teach guys yeah. assist children. How can they, if they're watching now and they're interested in this, how can they? Yeah, so to get involved with the Maya pro program, they can go on our website. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, www.rd-9.co.za and they can send us a message there and then hopefully they can get a kit. Um, if their schools are involved with that, they can also um, uh, speak to us and we can roll out to, mm. to a classroom because we're not just looking at uh, the, the child as an individual but also a school so oh, this is we okay. can do it in in class as well as after school okay, nice. so we, we want to have it self-paced as well so they'll start in, at school oh. and they'll learn something in the class but then they also feel free to explore when once they get home can okay, we establish that Awanke won't make his own robot <laughs> anytime soon because he's afraid that he'll turn evil but I'm interested in finding out um, what are the pros and cons of building up your own robot. Okay. Let's start with the pros. Yeah, so some of the, the pros that, that we, so the robot that we built was mm. specifically for education. And one of the biggest pros and advantages that we came across was that by building this ourselves, mm. we were able to build something that speaks directly to the African market. Mm. Um, okay. Both of us being South Africans, we understand the challenges that you know, South African learners face. Mm. And we were able to adapt this robot and the whole project Maya to sort of solve that problem. Um, so yeah, that's one of the biggest benefits to actually building something from the ground up instead of using something that exists or you know getting someone else to do it. Mm. Um, I don't know, Ritaj, you want to talk about the cons? Yeah, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll talk about the cons. So like I said, we started in 2016 and with developing everything, you get different revisions of things where, where things don't work uh, mm. and you just need to get the, through different revisions to get to the perfect one. I think because we've, be, we've been at it so long, We've been into the classrooms, we know what works and we know what doesn't work. Mm. And uh, we've gone through, I mean, this revision, I think it's maybe the third uh, the third one at the moment. So, so it means that oh. it's time consuming. Yeah. What keeps you going then? Because uh, one person will be like, ah, this is not happening, I'm giving up. What keeps you going? I think it's, it's, it's the passion and excitement. Mm. And uh, both of us are engineers, so we love this, we do this yes, for a living. Yes, yes. But we had, just to put it like, give an example, we had a workshop on a Saturday oh. that started at 8 o'clock in the morning with grade 8 to 10 learners. And we said the workshop would end at about 3 o'clock. Oh. Uh, by, by half past 4, none of the learners had left yet <laughs> because they wanted to build this and they wanted yeah. to go through all the challenges and they wanted to keep on programming. Um, so I think once you sort of build something for yourself, you yeah. get a sense of ownership. Like you, you, you're more proud yes, of it yes. and you, you want to yeah, keep going with it. But what are some of the uh, fascinating things that you can program into a robot? Yeah, so with the robot, um, it's really defined by the creativity of the, of the student. Mm. So we'll give you the building blocks, but you as the student uh, take it forward. And you, it's, okay. it's how you want this thing to be. So we have open-ended projects that we give to the kids, and they decide how to code their robot. Oh. So it's not, here's the right answer, it's more you decide what's the right answer for yourself mm. and we'll check um, afterwards. Yeah, yeah with that, Tyrone, you spoke of holding an um, e-workshop um, in the past weekend for grade 8 to grade 11 um, learners. Um, this means that you're introducing these initiatives to could be game changers in the technology sphere. Um, why is it important to introduce things like that um, and expose them to young kids at that young age? Okay, so that's a, that's a very interesting question, and I think oh. it's very relevant right now, especially with everything that's happening uh, with the fourth industrial revolution. Mm. Um, as I mentioned, both Rida and myself, we weren't exposed to these sorts of things at an early age, and if we had been, maybe our careers would have been very different. Mm. Um, so we sort of see it uh, as a responsibility on ourselves, yeah. you know, having you know, gone through this and you know, got our degrees and you know, realizing these uh, problems in the country. 
uh, with young people especially, um, we sort of, s if we can, you know, do something that can introduce some, someone to yes. new opportunities that they mm. wouldn't otherwise have gotten and can change their career uh, path uh. and introduce them to new things, um, yeah, I think it's, it's very important to... How to are the learners and the teachers receiving uh, all of this? Or maybe perhaps um, yeah. we can have them after the break and then they can explain how wow. the learners and the teachers yes, are. And we are not all talking no action. They're going to show us how this works. Stay tuned, right? After the break, there's more of XA and... <laughs> Keep it live. <laughs> Well, while climate change is a reality and DJ Fresh being fired for Metro, Excel being the biggest, the baddest, and the most hip and happening, Lama and Awonke being your host, there's a lot more facts right here in the world. The fourth industrial revolution is taking the world by storm, and the climate change is what it is today. So XA is bringing you all the information, all the entertainment, all the education, right where you need it between four and five for us on Twitter. It's XA underscore live on Facebook. It's XA on Cape Town TV. Like we said earlier on, we're not all talking no walk. Tyrone and we are standing by to show us how these robots work and if you want to take them home. I don't know if they are friendly. I Let see. me get them um, close because <laughs> <laughs> I want to see how this, this works. This looks like a lot for a person who doesn't have engineering background. Mm. What are all these things? Okay, so what you're seeing here is um, the, what we call the introductory level for introducing a newcomer to programming. Mm. And it's, it's not, it's, it looks daunting right now, but it's a lot simpler than you know, actual pro raw programming. So mm. the idea is that all these blocks represent different programming functions. And by putting them together, you are able to, to actually write a program that can then control this robot. Mm. So what you see here is a program that Ridal wrote mm. that actually uh, creates a controller that controls the robot. Sure. I think Ridal will show you that controller now. That, yep. That's impressive. How long did it take for you to, to, to program it? So uh, it wasn't that long. So, so what this is, uh, so the kids will go and build each block mm. individually. So it, it does, you don't just get and see a massive screen with everything. You get incremental changes or incremental improvements. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, you'll get something like this. So it looks, a lo it looks complicated, mm. but we've had uh, children uh, from different schools building up to get to this point. Where to from here? You build this with two wheels. Is there any other things that we can build? Um, yeah, so we have different ones. Um, we found that we initially started with a walking robot. All right. And uh, that was very, it was a bit more complicated, but it was, uh, we found that to get kids into the programming or into robotics quicker, mm. the, the wheeled robots are a bit better. So we have this one, and we have also ones that's focused on grade four to six. Mm. And they start with that, and they start in grade four, and each year you can add sensors to that. Yeah. And uh, you can, so we have an ultrasonic sensor over here, so that's basically a distance, uh, Detector, mm. so you can program it to autonomously avoid obstacles, or go through a go through a, ma a maze, or avoid each other. So it's really you can build on whatever your creativity. Is. Let's see it work. Okay, okay, well let's do it. Okay, so let's not make sure it goes off the table. Yep. So this is Bluetooth uh, um, enabled. Okay. So there's a wireless connection. So we've got a controller. I don't know if we need to show it. Um, it's uh, over there. Uh, and if we go forward, it's a bit fast for TV. So can, can you get it to slow down? Yeah, so so you you do. So you'll have to go into into the, the code over here. So mm. you see over here it says rotate motor with this power. So you can make that slower. Oh, okay, now let's try. So you can change that to be maybe 50. But you have to change both because you can control each robot individually. All right. So mm. there's a really an adaptive uh, way of programming this, and it's it's really up to the student to decide. So you can go ahead. Let, let's see when let's it's much slower. Uh, uh, what are its functions? So this robot has uh, quite so a lot of uh, what we call sensors mm. and different electronic components on it. So. The most obvious ones are the motors um, that allow it to move, mm -hmm. but also, as Ridal mentioned, um, is expandable with a variety of sensors. So uh -huh. we've got a distance sensor, we've got um, sound sensors and speakers. We also have different types of lights on there, uh -huh. and um, some of them even come with more what we call precision control motors, um, like this one over here. So yeah, it's, it's really expandable. 
And how's the um, learners and teachers? Oh, did I break it? <laughs> I broke no, it. No, no. But if you teach me how to build the robots, stop, I'll stop, 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 stop. No, no. So we, yeah, just so, so we're actually glad you did that because um, a lot of these, a, a lot of. <laughs> how do I then put it in? No. I want to break this one. Um, <laughs> Over here, it's easy. Okay, I think the talk can uh, get you um, set this up. This is B. Yeah. Uh, no, so I think you need to set up. So, how, how, so how? let me set this one up. So the, the the cool thing about these robots is that. Because, I mean, we want kids to play with these things. Yeah. We don't want kids to be scared to mess oh, around with it and drop up. it and that sort of thing. So it's something that can fall off the table and, you know, keep on working and, yeah, it's, it'll keep what, going. What else yeah. can you add to this? Can I make so it a four-wheeler and then add something maybe I can transport it to my nephew in the room? <laughs> something yeah. like that. Like a maid? Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. I want to program something that's not evil. A maid. Yeah, so, so what we have uh, on these kits right now, we've got an extension back. Mm. So it's also, we give you the body, but you can also add on and make your own forms. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really different sizes and things that you can do. We also have a robotic crew that fits onto where this is. And it can be to flip yeah. things and I maybe mean, pull yeah, things yeah. around. You wanted a maid, you can oh, pull some dope. laundry or something. So <laughs> won't this be taking away our jobs in the future? Now we won't have a teller in the bank, we won't have a cashier in pick and pay. <laughs> We won't have a presenter on Excel. They'll oh, be like, "Welcome to the show. We're chilling with Tyrone," <laughs> because they're programmed by our producers. Isn't this dangerous, though? Won't it take our jobs in the future? So I think that is a that is a fear that a lot of people have, mm. especially with the way things are moving. Um, mm. Which is actually why we embarked on this initiative. Um, we want to teach kids the skills that will make them relevant in the fourth industrial revolution. And one of those skills is programming. Yeah. So you might think that your job can be replaced by a robot in the future, but what if you can actually write the, pro the code to program that robot yeah. and you've got another job? Okay. So we, 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 we call it future-proofing through play, where by playing with these robots and learning how to code, you're actually you know, future-proofing your child or your learners for the future. Now, how do we get hold of you? Because this is interesting, and I'm sure the viewers would love to get in touch and break your things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can, like I said, you can get hold of us on our website. That's www.rd-9.co.za. Okay. We also have a Facebook page, and that's RD9 Solutions. Um, and yeah, you can find us uh, on those two channels. Do you have any future projects that you'd love for us to know about? Yeah, definitely. So we've <laughs> got... Uh, like I said, it's the the young <laughs> the younger um, the younger grades that we want to do, mm. and it's also uh, when we go out, we'd like to do robotic competitions. All right, and uh, yeah. that will be very interesting. Yeah. Thank you, you so much. Mission accomplished. I broke another one. <laughs> yeah. Right now, it's time for us to go to Germany and see what's happening in the world and sphere of technology. Thank you, Ridad. Thank you, Tyrone, Thanks for so coming through. And I'm sorry for this. No problem. <laughs> <All right. laughs>